Good morning, sisters. Good morning. Love all of you. Um, today, uh, I'll give some of you don't know me very well, like Cheryl and uh, Sandy. Sandy, and I'll just give you a brief uh, on my family. Uh, I married Jerry Fowler in 1967. Um, I got my engagement ring in 1966. We were 17. Uh, when I got married, I was still 17. I hadn't turned 18 yet. Um, my mom and dad had five kids. I was the oldest of four girls, and my brother was older than me by two years. And we were raised in uh, Sheridan Avenue Christian Church, and it's a Disciples of Christ Church. Um, I'll tell you just a, a smidge about it. Um, when I was eight years old, I went to a baptism class. And I went through this class, and when I got all done with the class, I think it was like four weeks of going, uh, they give you a certificate, and then you get baptized with the pastor. Nothing about salvation never heard a word about salvation and um, I thought baptism was my salvation because that's what they taught in that church and I'd gone there for 14 years since I was born so um, in about uh, six months or so that church had a big split and my parents just stopped going to church altogether, and it's really kind of hard because my dad led the music and he also him and my mom taught the youth group and um, so it was hard to go to church for 14 years and be part of a youth group and then all of a sudden you know we're not going to church anymore so they visited some other churches but None of them, you know, they didn't like any of them. So, for about a year, I, oh, let's see, about two years, I didn't go to church at all. And then when I went to high school, I met my husband, and he invited me to go to church with him on Sundays to Sequoia Hills Baptist Church over on North Harbor. And so, at that church, I had the most fabulous Sunday school teacher. Her name was Beverly Edwards, and I just loved her so much. I mean, we'd get in there, and at that church, they divided the boys and put the boys in their room, and then the girls would go in with their teacher. I love that. I can't tell you how much I love that. They didn't like it. The boys didn't like it. But I liked it because I had questions I wanted answered. I wouldn't do it in front of him. So, anyway, through this teacher, um, the, the time would pass by so quick. You know, you had, what, 30 minutes in there for Sunday school after you did the announcements and all that and I I know I couldn't wait to get there and I hated to leave so that's kind of some background and then Jerry and I have been married 54 years uh, we have a son uh, Brian who's 48 and a daughter Jamie who's 53 Jamie works at the bank in Coweta she's been there 22 years so she knows everybody in Coweta and then Brian, he works for a Christian company that does advertising. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Charles Stanley, but my son does all of his books, all of his tapes, the, the design for, for him. And he also goes to Georgia sometimes and does things for the church up there. So, uh, I'm real proud of him, too. And I'm going to open up in prayer. I should have done did this a while ago. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for leading me into this Bible study. I started this Bible study about a year ago. I continually want to please you in all areas of my life. I also have a strong desire 
to lead others into being obedient so that they can be blessed in all that they do. Now, Lord, let all of us trust you with our whole heart to submit and surrender to your word. Amen. Now, through this study, I came to, to realize two things. And Now, this is just an opinion. This has nothing to do with God's word. But doing this study, I realized, you know, how all of us have a, a love language. Well, I realized during this study, I say that God's love language is obedience. And I also say it's faith. Those two. Those two things God desires out of all of us. So, the lesson today is on obedience. And it's found 170 times in the Old and New Testament. The word obedience. And there are 75 scriptures that talk about obedience. And the definition of a bib biblical obedience is to hear God's word and act accordingly. And what does God promise for obedience? He will save us. He will watch over us. He will take care of us and give to us our needs. The Bible has a lot to say about obedience from Genesis to Revelation. Take the story of the Ten Commandments. We see just how important the concept of obedience was to God. Deuteronomy 11, 26-28 Obey, and you will be blessed. Disobey, and you will be cursed. In the New Testament, we learn the example of Jesus Christ that believers are called to a life of obedience. The Greek word for obedience means to trust. I don't know if when I was raised in a Christian church, we sang this song all the time. I'll see if I can sing just a little bit of it. It's trust and obey for there's no other way to be in Jesus is to trust and obey. So I put that in there because I did love that song. Uh, biblical obedience to God means to hear trust, submit, surrender to God's word. Jesus calls us to obey. In Jesus Christ, we find the perfect model of, of obedience. As his disciples, we follow Christ's examples. As well as his commands, our motivation for obedience is always love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, John 14, 15. Obedience is an act of worship. While the Bible places a strong emphasis on obedience, it's critical to remember that believers are not justified or made righteous by obedience. Salvation is a free gift of God and will and we can do any we can't do anything to earn it. It's a free gift. Uh, the Christian's obedience flows from the heart of gratitude for the grace we have received from the Lord. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for us. We must be living a holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Romans 12, verse 1. God also rewards obedience. Over and over again, we read in the Bible that God blesses and rewards obedience and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed all because you have obeyed me Genesis 22 verse 18 Jesus replied but even more blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice Luke 11 28 but don't just listen to God's word you must do what it says otherwise you're fooling yourself 
more if you listen and then not obey. It's like looking at yourself in a mirror. You see yourself and walk away and forget what you just saw. But if you look carefully at the perfect law that sets you free, if you do what it says and do not forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. James 1, 22. Obedience proves our love in the book of John, 1 John 2, clearly explains that obedience to God is, I can't even read my own writing here, uh, that we love each other. We love God and we obey His commandments. 1 John 5, verse 2 and 3. Obedience to God also demonstrates our faith. When we obey God, we show our faith and we trust Him. In some, if someone claims, I know God, but does not obey His commandments, that person is a liar and not living in the truth. Those that say, but those that obey God's word truly show that they are li living like Jesus did in 1 John 2, 3 through 6. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. That is often perplexed Christians. How can that be? But understood from the Old Testament perspective, the law required the Israelite people to offer sacrifices to God, but those sacrifices were never intended to take the place of obedience. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, or your obedience to His voice? Obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering. The fact Rebellion is as simple as witchcraft and stubbornness, as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the commands of the Lord, He will, re will reject you. Disobedience leads to sin and death. The disobedience of Adam brought sin and death into the world. This is the basis of our term original sin but Christ's perfect obedience restores fellowship Oliver, no, with God for everyone who believes in him sorry I'm having trouble speaking this my mouth sore no, you're doing great. <laughs> okay for as by one man Adam's disobedience the many were made sinners so by one man Christ's obedience many will be made righteous Romans 5:19. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. Through obedience, we experience the blessings of holy living. Only Jesus Christ is perfect. Therefore, only He could walk in perfect obedience. But as we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us from within, and we grow in holiness, this is the process of sanctification, which can also be described as spiritual growth. The more we read God's Word and spend time with Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to change us from within, the more we grow in obedience and holiness as Christians. Joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who follow the law and obey his laws. They search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in his path. You have charged us, Lord, to keep your commandments, and you decreed it. Then I will not be ashamed when I Compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteousness, your regulations, I will thank you, O Lord, by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me, Lord. Psalms 119, 1-8. Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us 
cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. Let us work towards complete holiness because we fear God. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. The verse above says, let us work towards complete holiness. We do not learn obedience overnight. It's a lifelong process that we pursue by making it a daily goal. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. It's great.